former Liverpool manager and Scotsman Bill Shankly once said, This shows how much football means to the regular fans as it's become a part of our national identity. But where did it all begin? Well, here at the Smith Museum Stirling, where they keep the world's oldest football. It was originally found behind a wall at Stirling Castle and is expected to be from the 1540s. It has only survived because it was made of pig's bladder. Scotland was the first country to create the equivalent of modern football and despite not being the biggest nation, it has certainly had some moments to be proud of. Like the Lisbon Lions, the Celtic squad, who were all born within 20 miles of Glasgow, who travelled to Lisbon and defeated Inter Milan to win the European Cup in 1967 and becoming the first British team to do so. Or domestically, Rangers, who won nine league titles in a row between the late 80s all the way to the 90s. Or even Aberdeen, who in 1983 travelled to Gothenburg to defeat the mighty Real Madrid side of the 80s to win the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup. Scottish football teams have been responsible for some amazing nights in Europe and domestically that have made an impact on the world of football. But what about the fans? We've heard some great moments that are well known to the world to why Scottish football has had some amazing nights. But what about the fans? Why have they become a fan of their club? I became a Rangers fan because of my dad and he passed it on to me and when I was younger, about eight or nine, he got his friend to take me to Ibrox and the atmosphere was brilliant and I've now passed it on to my children who I take when I get the chance. Yes, being a Falker fan is one of my first memories. Uh, I started supporting because of my dad, uh, my dad, my uncle and my, my granddad uh, all have been the Falker supporters all their life. My granddad was at the 1956 Cup Final when they actually won something. My first memories were just like sitting on my dad's shoulders at Brockville. You know, I, I can, it's just it's just the first thing I can remember. It's my happiest memories, and you know, I, that's that's my memories of how I became a Falker fan. It was when my first game with my dad took me to Ibrox, and you know, you just follow the footsteps. But um, going walking down. The tunnel when it was my mate's birthday party at um, school really helped that. You know, just seeing everybody there, being on the, the sidelines in the first game, you just live for it. Um, but primarily it was my dad who got me into the club. As can be seen from this stat, most of the football fans go for a love of the atmosphere, not necessarily the football on show. But what are the fans' best moments? To find out, I asked the interviewees. Uh, my best memory has to be uh, probably uh, last season when uh, when Fogger went through the went through the playoff. Uh, it was a semi-final against Hibs. It was the second leg. It was down to two-two in the last minute, and uh, who else but Bob McHugh scores in the last minute to send to send us to the uh, playoff final. Um, it was just absolute scenes. I remember, like, accidentally punching my dad in the face <laughs> when uh, I like, enjoy, like, <laughs> when I like jumped up to, to when he scored, and it was just, it was brilliant because uh, Falk and Hibs had a have a sort of rivalry at the minute, and they were, and it was just great to get one over on them. Best memory of being a football fan is <coughs> when Rangers got to the European Cup final, and it was against Zenit Saint Petersburg, if I remember correctly. Um, my dad and his mates and I was tagging along when we were going to go to Manchester on the big screens to watch it. And surprised that we got there to be fair. Um but I still had to after after being there, still had to you know, suffer for the loss. My best memory as a football fan has to be Helicopter Sunday when Scott McDonald won the league for Rangers in the dying minutes against Celtic when he'd already signed a pre contract for Celtic. Uh, Scott McDonald was playing for Motherwell at the time and it was Motherwell against Celtic at Fir Park and he scored two goals in the dying minutes and Rangers had to win their game against Hibernian, which they did. However, it's not all rosy for football fans. Despite it being enjoyed to millions of fans, you'll still get the point where you experience a harder side of football. I wanted to find out what the interviewees' worst moments in football were. My worst memory as a football fan is when Rangers got relegated or liquidated, if you like, 
down to the bottom flight of Scottish football. That, that was a very hard time because obviously Celtic, your rivals, are still up the top flight of football, winning leagues upon leagues. And, um, and we are still trying to rebuild our squad and get to that level. What my worst memory as a football fan has to be Valentine's Day, where I turned on the television to see that Rangers were put in the administration and with a big gap on Celtic at this point, and we were hoping that we were going to maintain that the whole season. But when you get put in the administration, you get deducted 10 points, and that lets Celtic soften the cushion we had in them. With everything that went on that season, we threw away the gap. We had an embarrassing loss to St Murren because obviously there was job losses at the time at Rangers, and we ended up going to the third division that season after getting demoted. Yeah, by far the worst is definitely the 2015 Scottish Cup final. I remember, I still remember it like yesterday, like I remember uh, just being on the edge of the whole game, like every time the ball was, was kicked towards the goal or anything, I remember jumping at my seat or going mental when I thought Will Volk scored a screamer from 30 yards and then I rem it was it was just made even worse because in the last 15 minutes, uh, Inverness had a player sent off. We then scored from a uh, from a free kick, and then in the last five minutes, uh, one of our players slipped on his arse, which <laughs> which then meant them to run up and uh, score in the last five minutes for them to to win eventually. I remember that that being the first time I ever cried at a football game. <laughs> I remember I screamed so much during the game that I had to take two days off school the next <laughs> the, uh, the following week. And also, I, I just remember like it just being the worst, and the, just you know, the worst football loss ever. I just couldn't get over it. Even now, I still get annoyed at people when they bring it up to me or try to rub it in my face. It's just the worst. I, I just hate talking about it. So advice to some non-football fans. When someone you know that does support a team has gone through a hard time, it does not help to say... They're only kicking a ball around a field. It's only a game. It's only a sport. Don't take it too seriously. It's just talentless men kicking a ball about a field. It has also become clear that the quality in Scottish football has severely dropped over the years, and fans are experiencing more bad moments than good ones. But what do the fans think is the reason we are so far behind other nations? I think we're so far behind, um, the root cause comes from money. We've not got enough in Scottish football to maintain, you know, playing games and just ha making fans want to come into the games. Um, money affects everything, so the pitch conditions are poor in Scotland and the weather isn't great either. So players from abroad don't want to come over and play in our, our conditions. <laughs> I think the main reason that we're so far behind is just because the facilities are just uh, lacking in Scotland. Um, I remember my dad telling me ages ago he went to a trip or with his boys team uh, eight years ago now uh, to Denmark and Denmark had these this big football dome and uh, outside they had acres of, of clean uh, cut, gr uh, cut grass for you to play football on and like, all these facilities and things like that just for you know, like under 12s team and stuff like that, you know, the level they were playing at, things like that. I mean, that's 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 years away for us. I mean, uh, I think how can you expect uh, Scottish kids to, to do well when, you know, other countries have got uh, just so much better facilities than us. And meanwhile, when I play uh, with and, and play football, I have to, you know, do with my local park, the Quarry Park, which is full of molehills. It's, it's lumpy and it's just... And it's it's un it's unfit for purpose really. Uh, how do you expect you know uh, players to get to the level of like Ibrahimovic and Ronaldo and Messi and things like that when we're not even playing on a flat ground? <laughs> Another reason that Scottish football is so far behind the other leagues is down to the amount of European sp spaces that we get. We get four, which I think is far too much in the terms that we only have three teams that can really compete in Europe and all four of the spaces are qualifying stages, one in the Champions League and three in the Europa League. And because of the pre-season, we find it very, very hard to prepare for these games. 
and they end up getting put out by small teams like Rejecker. Scotland may have created the modern equivalent of football, but as a nation we are being left behind by other countries, and whether you're playing five a side or watching the big games on TV, Scottish football is a massive part of Scottish culture which is slowly dying. With games quality deteriorating, people are no longer interested in the Scottish game, and it is clear something has to change in order to go back to the glory days.